Hi, welcome to another edition of Seven Spinball Arama. Uh, we are in my old workshop where I used to do all my videos. Uh, right now it's a storage unit. <laughs> Packed boxes and folded up pinball machines. There's a big pile of old back glasses I didn't want to put in the container. There's some back boxes here and there. Yeah, it's a mess in here. Uh, I've also taken down all of my lights that I used to have in here. So I, I apologize for the bad lighting, but uh, Today was the day out of the last four weeks that I've had a chance to kind of kick back and relax and I wasn't going to do anything today, but I'm making a video. <laughs> but the fact that I didn't want to do anything also means I'm not going to put up my video lights. So you get what you get. I'm, I apologize, but I really want to try this <laughs> and I'm going to film it just in case I screw up. So what am I doing today? So uh, if you're like me and uh, I know I am, you have rusty pinball legs or you have other rusty bits and baubles in your pinball machine uh, and you want to make them not so rusty. So I know that uh, there's a solution that you can buy. There's like, you know, easy rust off or whatever it's called. It's this toxic chemical sludge that you dump on your pinball legs and let them sit for an hour or a day or whatever it is. And the the rust just sort of sloughs off and people go, Hey, yeah, it's great. It's awesome. And I think about that and I'm like, great. Now I got like a gallon and a half of this gunk that what do I do with that chemical now that I'm not using it? Yeah. So that's just what I think. Um, so, you know, what I've done in the past is I've just used, you know, brute force. I've just taken wire wheels and things like that to it. Um, which is great until you have, you know, pinball legs for 40 machines that you kind of want to clean up a little bit. Uh, so I do know that you can use electrolysis to remove rust. And basically what you do is you, you make a solution of water and washing soda and the washing soda acts as an electrolyte for the electricity. You, you put the leg in, uh, you put a sacrificial anode, which is another piece of steel and you apply a current to it and the current goes from the leg to this to your sacrificial anode pulls the rust off with it everybody's happy um, the nice thing about that process is that um, at the end of the day your byproduct is just this kind of rusty washing uh, soda water stuff and that you know it's designed to put in your washing machine so it can just go down the drain when you're done with it it's not a big deal so I, that was attractive to me to try it. And uh, uh, spoiler alert, I tried it and it worked. <laughs> uh, it worked fine. But the, the problem is, is that where the rust was, now I have this exposed steel. And um, the leg that I tried it on, I, I tried it about, it was probably about eight weeks ago that I, was, I started thinking about playing around with this. And I, I did it and... It removed the rust and I was like great and dandy and the leg sat in here in just sort of a regular room and today I looked at it and the rust has come back in some places where I exposed it because I didn't put anything on it. So I started thinking okay well if I'm using electrolysis to get the rust off of the leg or whatever part um, I could use electrolysis to put metal back on it like electroplating right? Now, I don't want to get into chromine at all, which is, I'm not exactly sure how they do it. I just know that it's um, kind of a nasty process. Uh, chromine ideal would be ideal because it would, you know, look like how the leg was originally. But I, I just, you know, I, I don't think it's something for your, your uh, um, workshop type situation. <laughs> but nickel, nickel works. Nickel is easy to, to use uh, for plating. And I have nickel on, like I have some clarinets and some other woodwinds that have nickel keys and they stand up to a lot of abuse of, you know, um, it's, it's pretty common to use nickel for plating things that you're going to be fiddling with. So nickel should work just fine. Now it's probably not going to be super shiny like chrome is. I don't know how it's going to attach itself to the chrome for electroplating. It should attach to the exposed steel just fine, but... So that's one of the things I'm really interested to see is, is if we electroplate an entire or a majority of a pinball leg with this stuff, what are the end results going to look like? Now, the, the cool thing about this too is that I have stuff like this, which is like, you know, an old 
coin door and it's the little uh, coin eject button is is kind of rusty and gross and I could electro plate this in nickel and it would look fantabulous. Um, this little hinge set, I could do that. Tons of little parts, little habit trails on a, on a pinball machine or something that's kind of rusty. I electrolysis the rust off and I stick metal, metal, uh, nickel on there and give it a little shine and everybody's happy. So that's what we're going to try. Uh, I don't know how this is going to work, uh, how the, the, the nickel on the chrome is going to work. So that will be interesting. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to do in the video is we're going to make our nickel uh, acetate solution, which is um, uh, basically getting our nickel free flowing in, in the solution. And we'll use that to then use electricity to stick it on our, uh, on our pinball leg or what have you. So let's start with that, and then I'm going to do the whole process for you. I'm going to, I'm going to electroplate, or I'm going to use electrolysis to remove the rust, and I'll show you how that works. And then we're going to kind of prep that surface, and we're going to stick the nickel on there, and uh, maybe we'll all be surprised. <laughs> all right, let's make our solution. Okay, so the to make the solution, we're basically using uh, distilled white vinegar. This is, um, I think it was a 5% acidity. And then for uh, the uh, electrolyte, we're just going to add some salt. And I, I decided on Himalayan white salt because it's supposed to be healthier. <laughs> no, I bought it because it was like dirt cheap. Um, then we have two, uh, two little plates of nickel. I got these off Amazon for just a few bucks each. And then we'll apply some power to it and we'll let it cook for a while. The solution should go from uh, this... Um, uh, clear and it should turn sort of a greenish blue color. Uh, I'll set up a time lapse as I'm doing it so that we can kind of just watch it change color. <laughs> I don't know how long this is going to take, um, but we want it a nice dark rich color. So uh, we'll just run it as long as we need to. So um, yeah, so I guess we'll uh, go ahead and just make our stuff here. If I can open this, well, let's, I have no idea how this opens. I don't know, it's smarter than I am. Ha. It smells like vinegar. I'm just gonna use the whole jug because if this works, I'll probably be doing a fair amount of it. Isn't this a nice vase? My girlfriend bought me this just for this video because I needed something to stick uh, a leg in and I wanted to see it from the side. And so she went to the dollar store and, and spent like $2 on me. She's a keeper. <laughs> so um, what I'm seeing is people are adding to about a gallon or so, people are adding a handful of teaspoons to, um, or maybe a tablespoon or so of salt. I'm just gonna wing it. Um, this is mostly just a test to see how well it's gonna work. So we'll just, I don't want too much salt in there. So that was, I don't know, that was probably about a half a tablespoon or something. Okay, I've got my vinegar and salt solution here. I put a little piece of uh, paper on it because I have my time lapse here and I want a, a nice white background so that we can watch the, the color change on the time lapse. Um, okay, so uh, I've got, my uh, little rods of nickel, they're in here, positive on one, I have negative on the other or the other way around. So we'll turn on the power supply and I've got this cranked. So we should be getting, we would be getting more amps out of it uh, if there was more salt in here. But since I'm working with mostly steel, I think I wanna keep my salt contact content kind of low. Um, so we've got, we've got bubbling as we're supposed to have, and uh, I'm just gonna let this sit for a couple hours and we'll come back and see how it looks.
Okay, this is, this is similar to what we just did. Um, what I'm gonna do is I've got a bucket here. It has water and it has, it's about, I think, three tablespoons of washing soda, which is, I just bought this generic, generic washing soda. Simply clean. Um, and so it's just water and the washing soda. So I'm going to put my pinball leg in here. And I'm going to attach the negative lead to this. And then I have this old scrap piece of rebar and I'll put the positive lead on this and I'll set it just close to it, not touching, but close. And then we'll turn on the power supply and we'll let this cook for a little while until the, um, until the rust comes off. Okay, this is about an hour later. Let's have a look and see how we're doing. All this rust and junk. That's what we want to see. So this is turned black. There's actually a name for this. I don't really know what it is, but this. So I think we've got it. Let's hit this with some sandpaper or some uh, steel wool and see if we can kind of clean this up a little bit. a little bit better um, it's it's kind of smooth for the most part um, better than down where the um, where the rust still is um, but you can feel it I mean you can feel it's there it's a little rough backside this is kind of rough in some sections but yeah I could probably spend a little bit more time prepping it. It looks like there's still a little bit of rust in there, but um, that's just a test, you know? So let's put some plating on it and see how that looks. So I have my, my negative is on my piece of nickel. My positive is on the leg uh, in our fancy green solution. So what I was uh, seeing people saying is that you don't want to use uh, like a high amperage voltage like we were doing to remove the rust. What we want to do is let it let it go slowly. Um, otherwise we're going to end up getting probably a plating like this which is pretty rough and tumble. We want just a little bit to stick it a little bit at a time. So let's get this to be, um, I'll turn this down <clears throat> and we'll get this to go at about one and a half volts because because people are using deep batteries. So let's let's start there and see what we can get out of it. I do see a little bit of bubbling. Not a ton. And this does, this doesn't take hours to do this. Um, it's just a, a handful of minutes from what I understand. I've never done this, so uh, yeah. So I'll let this sit and then we'll come back. Well, I think that was a worthwhile experiment. Um, it, it's silver. <laughs> <laughs> it, there's a there's nickel on there it's not going to rust so you know that's a good thing 
the downside is it's not shiny and chrome, nor is it awaited in Valhalla. So, <laughs> but uh, you know, it was it was fun to play with. I'm glad I did. Um, I think that there's practical applications that we can use on a pinball machine. Uh, you know, wire pieces, wire forms, have a trails, things of that nature. Uh, maybe, I don't know. There's just tons of tons of things that could uh, use a nice nickel plating. Um, I do need to experiment a little bit more with it though. I have these two uh, small, uh, they were little brass pieces that, that were for picture frames and things and they were brass colored and I, I was able to nickel plate one of them came out all shiny and chrome and ready for Valhalla. But um, uh, some other things that I tried didn't work out. So I do know that some metals are not compatible with other metals for electroplating. So I need to figure out what those are. But it was an experiment worth doing. Um, and uh, I would really like to try a lockdown bar now just to see how that works. But uh, so I think my next step is I'm going to actually order a bag of the the crystals that are ready for um, nickel plating. There's there's companies out there that make this stuff and they, they make it, it's like a dark nickel or it's for a shiny nickel. They have different grades and variants and things like that. So I think the next thing I'll do is I'll order a bag of that um, instead of using my magic green potion that I mixed up myself. Um, so we'll, we'll try that and we'll try it on a couple of different things and I'll see if I can find an old lockdown bar that is uh, a little Ugh. <laughs> see if I can make it ready for Valhalla. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's this episode. Uh, thanks for watching me make mistakes and uh, next time.